What's going on everyone? I'm Suboptimal Engineer and I make videos about tech and productivity. In this video, I just wanted to go over my top 10 Visual Studio Code shortcuts for maximizing my coding productivity. Now these are just gonna be the basic VS Code commands, so I won't be covering anything advanced like Vim commands. So I have that disabled for this specific video. Feel free to skip around using the timestamps that I've linked down below. Before we get started, I do wanna ask for one small favor from you guys, which is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. It does take me a little bit of time to make these videos, so that would really help me and the channel out quite a bit. With that out of the way, let's jump right in. So let's get started with some of the basic commands that you probably already know because they're available in every single app out there from Microsoft Word to Google Docs to Notion to basically any app you've ever used. And so those commands are Command C to copy something that you selected, Command V to paste that thing that you just selected, Command Z to undo what you just did, Command Shift Z to redo what you just undid, and Command F to just search for things in a file. These five commands, I'm just gonna consider them as one command just because we all know them. So what is Command Shift F? Command Shift F is a command that lets you search for words or selected text inside all of your files inside of your workspace. Now this workspace specifically has one folder and that folder is the project name. So if I do a Command Shift F on get stats, it searches through all the files in that folder and sees where get stats is visible. And if I do it for get selections, it does the same thing. Command shift F is really important because usually the definition that you're looking for is not in the file that you have open. We just see all the times where a specific method is called. And it's usually the most common thing I do right behind command F is command shift F on any selected term or phrase or function or anything like that. Let's just say I want to change this variable from is loading to has loaded. How would I do this normally? I would select it, delete it, and then change it to has loaded. And maybe I will select it again, copy it, select this, command V, select this, command V. That is a lot of extra work that you don't need to do. And command D solves that for you. So how does command D work? You select something, and then if you press command D, it finds the next instance of that selected text and selects it for you. So if I were to remove it, it would remove it in both instances. Let's do a command Z. So what we wanna do is change is loading in all instances. So what we can do here is say is loading and press command D twice, and then press a backspace, and then say has loaded. So that is what command D does. It's really useful when you have variables like this that are in the same file that you need to change because it happens a lot. So the next three commands go hand in hand. So I'm going to talk about them in one section. And these commands are command P, command W, and command shift T. When you're working on a project, you usually want to find a file. So say for example, I wanna find a user file. I'm gonna press command P and that opens up a search bar where I can do a fuzzy search on all files inside of my folder. So I wanna to go to the user file and user.js. So I'm gonna say user.js. And because in this case, I know that exact file, it gave it to me. Let's say I don't know the exact file and I only know that the file I want is inside of the server folder. So I'm here and I notice, so there's a few other subfolders inside of server and now I'm like, so the file I want is inside of server and it's inside of models. So now I do a fuzzy search and say, I forgot how to spell server and I just press S-E-R because I forgot how to spell server. In that case, it still does a fuzzy search so you are pretty good to go. Command P is one of the most useful things that you can learn about because it helps you find files so quickly, especially once you have some knowledge about what the code base is, Command P is your go-to bet to find files. Obviously, if you open files, you want to close them. So that's what Command W does. Command W is used to close files. Command P to open files. Let's just open some files. Let's just open user.js. Let's open the server file. Let's open a view file. Let's open about.view, you know, command P to open files. Command W to close files. What does happen when you press command W really quickly or you open a file and you accidentally close it, it's kind of annoying. Command shift T is there to help you because what command shift D does is it reopens the file you just closed. So if I close user.js and I press command shift T, it's gonna reopen user.js. Say I close about.view, then user.js, then sponsorship.js, and then keybindings.js. Now, if I press command shift T, we're gonna get keybindings.js. And basically it 
remembers the way you close them and it opens them in the way that you close them. So it's a, these are very essential commands that you should definitely be using to find files, close files that you open and reopen files that you just closed. So another useful command is command J. Now I have command J remapped to something else and I have it remapped to control T. And basically control T for me or command J for you, if you don't remap it, is gonna open the terminal. And if you just wanna like run the server really quickly or do a git diff, it's really useful to have the terminal. I personally never use the terminal in VS Code, but I know it's a useful technique that a lot of people use. So that's why I wanted to mention it. Command J, just remember that. So sometimes when you're coding, you don't really know what file you want. You just want to explore the code base. I want to look at files that are right next to user.js. Then I could just do a command shift E. It's going to select user.js inside of the models folder. And I can, you know, browse through these files with my mouse. If you have Vim commands enabled, you can actually traverse through this with Vim commands as well. And that's tends to be helpful as well. And the next very useful command that I use quite a bit is going to be command B. And all command B does is it toggles this explorer section. And usually I have the explorer section open if I'm doing a command shift F or if I do a command shift E and I'm just traversing through the files, I always have this open, but when I'm coding, I don't like it open. So I just press command B. So command B toggles this section right over here. So the catch all command is command shift P. You can just search through all possible commands that you have with command shift P and it shows you all commands that are available to you to use right now. I usually just use it to either open a folder in a workspace or I use it to change the color theme. So I go like this and then you know, I change the color theme to something else. And I don't use this very often, but it's very useful to helping me get to Zen mode. Zen mode is this mode where you don't have any distractions so that you can just like start coding. It's like, if you know what you have to do, then I, I tend to use Zen mode quite a bit just because I don't like having distractions on my screen. But yeah, command shift P can easily help me toggle between Zen mode. It can help me change the color themes, add folders to workspace. If you don't know what uh, you want to do, you can just press command shift P and go through every single possible command that you could possibly do. So I just wanted to include one bonus command that I added to my setup that I don't always use, but I try to whenever I get the chance, which is control L. If I go to my directory and I do control L, then you'll see that I have console log uh, set up and it enters insert mode. I set that up over here and you can actually do a lot of advanced things like this inside of VS Code using keybindings.json. You could probably make this a print function if you want it. If you use Python, you know, you can, you can set stuff up really well with Visual Studio Code. So that's gonna be it for this week's video. If you guys think that I missed any essential shortcuts, do leave them down in the comment section below because I'm always trying to think about the most optimal way to code. And if I missed any essential shortcuts, then I would definitely like to know. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. I'll catch you guys next time.